And so if any of you have had a European history class, you would have picked up on the diet of worms. And of course, if you've hung around Lutheran churches for any amount of time, you've heard about the diet of worms as well. <clears throat> so it's not that diet of worms. My kids love the sour candies. I do not like the sour candy. All right, so here's an image uh, from the 1800s uh, of the diet, uh, the assembly. So we're talking, you know, bull was a Latin word that meant decree. Um, uh, a diet is a Latin word that means an official assembly uh, brought together for making laws, legislation. So you could call any session of Congress, I suppose, a diet. Uh, zooming in just a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about the players. Uh, you see there Martin Luther um, holding forth at this assembly of uh, the rulers of, of the Holy Roman Empire. And then you see um, a man named Johannes Eck. Uh, this Eck was the, bishop's, the, the assistant to the Bishop of Trier. And Eck acted as sort of the mediator, the interviewer of Luther. Luther came to the Diet of Worms thinking he was going to be given a chance to defend his teachings based on scripture, but he didn't have that chance. He was only given two options. Option one, renounce your teachings and your writings. Option two, don't renounce them. That's, that's all. So, you know, he's sitting there talking, but he's not talking about his teachings. Instead, he's talking to Eck. Um, there's his books, his writings, uh, and through Eck to the Holy Roman em Emperor, a guy named Charles V. And uh, he's depicted here giving his famous speech, the famous Here I Stand speech, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, this whole thing was made possible uh, in the middle of April 1521, so 500 years ago. This whole uh, gathering and his appearance before the assembled powers of the Holy Roman Empire was made possible by this man, a man named Frederick the Wise or Frederick the Great, no, Frederick the Wise. He wasn't called the Great. Um, uh, this was Luther's prince, and he had a lot of clout. If he didn't have that clout, we probably would not all be sitting here. History would have taken a completely different direction. But Frederick the Wise sort of defended Luther and wanted Luther to be given a chance. Uh, but much to Frederick's chagrin, he wasn't given a chance to defend his teachings. Instead, Luther was asked, like I said, um, do you recant? Do you renounce your teachings or not? So here's uh, the end of Luther's speech. Uh, if you can't read those letters, I'll read for you. Unless I am convinced by the testimony of the scriptures or by clear reason, for I do not trust either in the Pope or in councils alone, since it is well known that they have often erred, right, made mistakes and contradicted themselves. I am bound by the scriptures and my conscience is captive to the word of God. So this is the famous here I stand speech. And he concluded that speech with these words, I cannot and I will not recant anything, right? I will not renounce anything I've written or taught since it is neither safe nor right to go against conscience. Here I stand, although one interviewer or one recorder does not record him saying here I stand. Another one does. Uh, here I stand, he says, may God help me, amen. So that's the famous speech that Luther gave before the Holy Roman Empire, uh, Emperor and all the empire's assembled powers. So that's the famous speech. Uh, not everyone is familiar with uh, Charles V's response to this speech, written down a few days later with the help of his, um, his aides, including uh, counselors and bishops. Uh, Charles, in fact, was only 21 at the time and had only been emperor for six months. So he was a little bit fresh, um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, he had good handlers, let's say, and so they, wrote a, they helped him write a letter, and this is part of the letter. After having heard the obstinate answer which Luther gave yesterday in the presence of us all, I declare to you that I, have, uh, that I regret having so long delayed to act against this Luther and his false doctrine, but I'm now determined to act against him as a notorious heretic. So congratulations, all of you are in a church uh, originally named for a notorious heretic. 
Uh, here's a, and, and then the follow-up to this was uh, something called the Edict of Worms, basically uh, banning Luther and his teaching uh, and his followers, uh, who are m mainly pastors here at the time, and uh, not only banning them, but threatening them with the penalty of death if they continued to uh, preach Luther or teach Luther or distribute his writings. So this is called the Edict of Worms of May 1521. Again, uh, 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 an edict re released 500 years ago. Um, all right, so just to uh, uh, quote a little bit from that edict, to put an end to the numberless and endless errors of the said Martin, let us say that it seems that this man, Martin, is not a man but a demon in the appearance of a man clothed in religious habit to be better able to deceive humanity and wanting to gather the heresies of several heretics who have already been condemned, excommunicated, and buried in hell for a long time. Right? This, is, this is not a time for understatement. 